everybody. My name is Addison. I'm the service manager over at Bikes Not Bombs. Uh, Bikes Not Bombs is a tremendous nonprofit organization. Uh, we use the bicycle as a vehicle for social change to achieve economic mobility for black and other marginalized people in Boston and the global south. Um, what that means is we have a lot of free programs for youth and anybody who wants to learn about bicycles and use them uh, as a way to, to, to get by and keep rolling. Um, we do a lot with bikes in the city. Uh, we ride all year round and there's a lot to know about riding in the winter, especially for you first timers who have, I'm sure, a lot of questions about it. Some of the big things, uh, you know, what I think is most important is, above all, keeping your bike clean. Uh, bikes tend to wear down a lot faster in the winter, so if we can try and keep them clean, uh, there's a lot of wet weather out there and the water loves to collect dirt on your bicycle. So keeping your bike clean with some simple green and an old t-shirt or a bag you have can go a long way. Especially when you're using specific lubricants that are made specifically for wet weather. Um, these are things that do need a lot of attention to clean because they will collect dirt. Anyway, let's get into that. Uh, there's some really great lubrications uh, that you can use to keep your stuff protected and moving a lot smoother throughout the winter. Um, for example, uh, we have dry and wet lube. Dry is what we use nine times out of 10 during the summer. Um, any dry, any dry, dry kind of season, stuff like that, we love a dry lube. Uh, but once it gets wet, it starts raining, that dry lube tends to wash off really easily. That's why we have a wet lube. A wet lube is much thicker and offers a lot more protection for your chain. However, being so thick and liquid, it is a bit sticky, so it does collect dirt. So it's a bit of a commitment for you to keep cleaning it off once a week and reapplying it at least. Uh, at least about once a week. So, uh, it's kind of tough, but you'll see if I am to drip out a dry loop, which we use during the summer and anytime we're not riding through a lot of wet weather, that's nice droplets. But if we use a wet loop, that's a straight stream, much thicker, much more protected. Tough to see on camera, but either way, it makes a big difference. However, it helps to keep it clean. Uh, Jamel, would you care to uh, talk about a few things? Let's see. We're on the topic of keeping our bike clean right now. One thing we can always stress is if you do ride a lot, like I noticed people will ride in the rain and stuff like that, and they'll go in, they won't really clean the chain afterwards. Think about it, if you have your bike ready for the summer weather and there's dry loop on there, the rain just washes it all off. So what you want to do is make sure you're cleaning it and always reapplying the lube to it. Other than that, just it's a lot of the same maintenance that you would normally do to maintain your bike and everything, just like during the summer months, just making sure you keep your so if someone comes in from a, a wet ride and they only have a few minutes, what are the areas that they should concentrate on most? I say wipe the dirt off the wheels uh, and clean the dirt off the chain and reapply some lube. That's going to help you get the most out of your bike and keep it lasting the longest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. Make sure if you have rim brakes, you want to make sure you're really cleaning down those rims because that's your stopping power when you're riding in the wet. If you have disc brakes, they get a little less dirty, but you still want to make sure that the rubber stays clean on them so you have no stuff. Something fun about your bicycle is it will actually tell you when it's time to re-lubricate as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you notice, when you lubricate your chain, it starts running pretty silently. Most noises on bicycles come from an unlubricated chain. And like I said, lubrication comes off when it gets wet, and if it dries off after that, it's going to get pretty noisy. So that's an easy way to tell you that it's time to clean off and re-lubricate that chain. Also, when you hit your brakes, if you notice it feeling very gritty and making a lot of noise, uh, it's time to clean your wheels. These are both two areas that collect so much dirt and they will wear down fast if you don't clean them. With that said, something else that's a big deal for the winter that I always try to emphasize is fenders. Uh, fenders are gonna keep you dry. Yeah, they are. I don't know if you noticed, but if you ride without fenders in the rain, your shoes will get soaked and your back is going to get dirty and everyone's going to laugh at you because you don't know. <laughs> so, uh, start, feel free to start with a rear fender. 
Uh, these guys are easy to click on. There's a couple different options here. You strap them right onto the back of your seat post. Very easy to install Super easy. and uninstall. Yep. Now you've got a full connector set here that's a bit more of a commitment. Uh, you can leave this on all winter. It does add a little bit of weight to your bike, but it's very worth it considering how much dirt it's going to keep off of there and how dry it can keep you. Mm -hmm. These feather sets run about $45. Mm -hmm. And what we have right here is like the nice fiber models in between, with like the full coverage and then the strap on. You can simply, this one looks like it's going to be on the front, so you put it on, put it on the front, protects the front wheel and everything like that. So this is a good option if you want more coverage than just the simple clip on fender and more sleeker and more metal. This kind of takes out like a solid on the road. Another benefit to this bike, uh, this particular fender from Planet Bike called Speed Ease, is that this will fit on a road bike that might have a much tighter frame where fenders won't actually slide into it. This just sits on the wheel as opposed to going underneath the brake or anything like that. So you get full coverage and it's very easy just to strap on real quick for those bikes with minimal clearance. Hmm, let's see, let's move into, let's, keep, let's talk about keeping ourselves warm. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. I don't want to get it. Nope. So what I'd say start off with, right now I just have these 100% gloves and stuff stuff in the bike shop. These are three season gloves, so if you do plan on taking a longer commute and temperatures about below 30, you might want to think about putting something that's a little warmer in here or switching to a warmer pair of gloves. Other than that, these are really good for, I just want to suggest these over a longer run. They do hold the heat in for like a short failure for the commute into work, 5, 10, but other than that, you might want something a little heavier. What about the visibility? The visibility on these, I'm not sure if they're reflected, but I have a nice bright orange, so you can see my hands when I'm doing my hand signals when I'm turning and everything like that, which is also something you want to be thinking about. This 100% tag is on this. This is all reflected, let's check it out. Look at that, it is reflected. So, let me see, there's some other things that I also like to wear when I'm out on my ride, and they're going to be my flower the ones is inside out, but of course they're so this is just simple, you put it right over your head, it gives you top of the head coverage for wind protection through your helmet and everything like that, and it also gives you face protection. One problem that I have with this is I have a little more hair, mine's become stretched out and it doesn't fit my head correctly. So what I do is I team it up with a little neck gaiter, where either I put it over my forehead a little more, and then that really helps shield the wind, especially when I'm going like a little faster. I like to ride road bikes all season, so you know, I'm not going slow. Coverage is key. Yes, coverage is definitely key. So yeah, if you uh, have any, have any gaps or anything like that, just try and find the material that covers those gaps. Here. And you have anything to here? I would love to touch on uh, a little bit more on these gloves yeah, and the visibility. Yeah. So a big thing about the winter is that it gets dark so fast yeah. and we all have to commute home from work. So what helps with that situation is reflective gear. Uh, bright colors like this orange or this high visibility green. These are the kinds of things that are going to allow you to feel a lot more secure out there. And look for things with reflective padding on them. Things like this right here. All these little reflective bits will shine like crazy when a, when a car light hits those. So uh, it's better that the lights hit you than the car does, am I right? <laughs> so high visibility gear, you can get green vests, bright. I mean, this, this high visibility yellow, you can get this on almost every article of clothing you have to ride your bike. You can get it uh, to cover your butt, your shoes. You can get it uh, as a vest. You can get it as you know, pants, gloves, you name it. You can get high visibility green or high visibility yellow, which is both key for being able to be seen uh, when it gets dark. Another thing you'll need is obviously a nice rear uh, and front light. Now, when it gets darker, uh, you know, I like to recommend that you need to be strobing. Uh, I personally like this setting. I have this light myself. It's great. This is a nice setting that doesn't blind the driver, but it lets them know you're there and it still allows you to run your life. Strobing lights, even though they do bring a lot of attention to you, uh, they can actually be very distracting. Um, and they don't actually light the way for you, which can be pretty important on those dark trails and uh, dark, uh, you know, um, bike lanes, things like that. So, we like a solid night at light. Um, this uh, Sagalite Metro does have this awesome slight strobing feature to it that I really like. I, I love this thing. It, it, it's worked for me really well. Um, it doesn't get too obnoxious to me and drivers haven't been done either. So, these guys are great and we're really, 
loving the way um, bike lights are going these days being USB recharges. So when I get here, I plug mine into my computer by, via USB, and that works great. I love it. I can you know charge it up once every two weeks or so, and I'm good to go. Before we uh, segue, I want to come on over here and do a quick demonstration while we're talking about it. Yeah. I noticed a lot of things like on the Southwest Corridor and other bike paths that cyclists seem to run their headlights right at you. And when it's running right at you, you're probably blinded right now on the camera, right? So what you want to make sure you do is you want to angle it down. That way you're illuminating your path and people can still see you approaching, but you're not blinded to the driver or anything like that while they're also coming in. So that's just something I wanted to bring up on the topic of lights while we're there. Um, I wanted to quickly show you this back brake light. Uh, from what I, uh, my, my thought process has always been that there's no need for this to be solid. I like to leave my brake light always strolling, just to catch the driver's attention. Uh, that's a big deal, so strobing back light, we like that. <laughs> Great to catch the attention. So moving on from uh, lights, reflective gear, this is a nice segue into tires. A lot of people run a very smooth tire for the summer, but that tends to get a little bit slippery in the winter, and it doesn't give you a lot of grip when you get into slush and snow and things like that. Now this tire, the great thing about it is firstly, it has that reflective strip that we've been talking about. This, all of these tires, a great thing to get with them is this reflective strip. Not only does this one have a reflective strip, it's got a lot of tread, but it also has metal studs coming out. So these guys, yes, they will slow you a little bit down on pavement, but that pays for itself tenfold when you get into slushy snow or icy conditions. This is a great way to feel secure on your bike when there's snow on the ground, because the worst thing about riding a bike in the winter is the snow on the ground. Uh, unless you're mountain biking or you're mountain bike or there's some sort of monster truck. Um, these come in all different sizes, uh, 20, 26 inch, 729 inch, uh, 27 inch and a quarter by a quarter, uh, you name it. They've tried to make this an accessible tire for everybody, though it is about $75 a piece. They're not cheap, but these, when you run them only for a couple of months each year, they last a couple, quite, a few, quite a few years. They, they can last a lot. And if you are thinking about purchasing them, try and do it a little bit of advance or when you plan on riding with them because they do have a braking period where you need to actually break the stuff in a little bit to make sure they're all the way driven in. So don't go buying these the day of a crazy snowstorm and expect to get all the way. So we've touched on um, tires, we've touched a little bit on clothing, uh, coverage, lights, reflective gear. I want to talk a little bit about warmth. Um, it gets colder and colder and colder, and then it hits a point where you've never been that cold. Yeah. And I think everybody can relate to that just about every year. So layering is so important. I'm a big snowboarder. Uh, I've been doing a lot of you know backcountry hiking and things like that for a long time, so I've spent a lot of time in the outdoors where it gets real cold. Um, all sorts of different conditions. So the big deal about staying warm is making sure you don't put so much stuff on it you start sweating like crazy. So, I love synthetic clothing. Uh, I, I, I don't care much for cotton uh, when you're riding in these conditions because when you start to sweat, cotton soaks up and it doesn't dry out. Moisture wicking clothing with generally like a, a synthetic, like a polyester or nylon material, like you see right here, is tremendous for a first layer, it dries off and it keeps you warm and it keeps you breathable. So I love to start off with a synthetic first layer, uh, short sleeve, then I like to go to a long sleeve. If it, if this is for the extra cold days, a long sleeve synthetic layer. It helps to have a long sleeve with thumb holes on it so you don't get that gap between your glove and your jacket. Then I like an insulating layer, uh, like some sort of, like, um, Perhaps the down sweater from North Face, or any sort of uh, polyfill insulated um, insulating layer, like a jacket, some sort of jacket. Um, synthetic fill, uh, <laughs> synthetic insulated jackets are, are amazing for that sort of thing. So I like a t-shirt, a synthetic t-shirt, synthetic long sleeve, then a uh, warmth layer, your insulation layer, and then your waterproof. All four of these things, if you keep them synthetic, I love Gore-Tex for the outside layer. Um, Gore-Tex, windproof, um, things like that. 
waterproof. Um, that's the way to keep it warm. Uh, insulating by not overdoing it and not going with materials like cotton uh, because cotton kills. <laughs> yeah, that's what we say. And uh, generally, what I like to say is you want to start cold. When you go leaving out of your house, you want to start cold because once you get cycling, you get riding, you're going to bring your body up to temp. So go outside. You don't want to be to the point where you're shivering, but you definitely do want to feel a slight chill. And then once you're about five minutes into the ride, you should be all warmed up and everything. You don't want to be that famous person who comes outside in a ski jacket. Next thing you know, five minutes into the ride, they're dying, trying to get their jacket off, and they fell because they don't want to ride um, Let's see. Some other... So I recently got into cycling in the winter, so I don't have as much experience with a lot of stuff that Addison has experience with, but I've been finding little tricks that work for me. Like he said, you can look for stuff that has dumb holes in it, that way you don't have the gap. What I've done for me on days when I have the gap is I simply just use the rubber bands that are on my wrist, I put them on the outside of my glove, put them on the sleeves, and that creates a lot of not a lot of air that's up into my body. So you definitely want to be thinking of stuff like that. So if you have one like a jacket that has like an open neck, you want to put on a nice scarf, that way air is not being tunneled down into your body. Because that's what you really want to try and keep. You want to keep your core nice and warm, and then you also want to keep your extremities nice and warm. Because even though it might not be freezing out, it doesn't take much to get frostbite or even frost again. So you want to be really careful with that. Could we go into the difference between like a hard shell jacket and soft Absolutely. shell, like that cycling jacket? We have a soft shell jacket right here. Now this is another example of one. This one came from like a regular Columbia Rudolph winter coat. This is something you could always substitute with if you might not have the funds or availability to go buy a cycling jacket right away. You can make do with winter clothing that you use for long cycling stuff. Yeah, that would be good as like a insulator. So yes, this is my setup um, for the really cold days. Uh, like I said, I like a synthetic tee, and then I like a synthetic long sleeve. And then we have our insulating layer. This is a synthetic fill, very lightweight, very packable insulating layer. Um, this is by a company called Dekine, who specializes in ski and snowboard products, but this still fits very nicely underneath my gear, and it's got a nice material to it that doesn't make me sweat, and it's very, very warm. That, accompanied with a Gore-Tex outer shell, will keep you warm all winter long. This is another ski jacket, but it works very well for cycling. Uh, it's very breathable, very, very lightweight, very thin. We love breathable, lightweight stuff. Um, these technical clothings uh, with tape seams, a Gore-Tex uh, Gore inner and outer um, go such a long way, just keeping you dry. So we call this an out, uh, a hard shell. A windproof, waterproof, hard shell, insulating layer. You can trade that insulating layer out on the warmer days for a soft shell. Something a little bit thinner, still just as breathable, very, very warm. Some people will even wear this with a long sleeve underneath it um, for those days that are maybe somewhere around 45, <laughs> which to us is pretty warm during the winter. We like that a lot. I can wear this in about negative, tw you know, <laughs> negative 10 and be pretty okay. So insulating layer, uh, very, very durable, waterproof, windproof, uh, technical shell. These things work great and they help you stay warm and happy on your ride. I'm also a big fan of turtle fur neck warmers. Uh, super popular with everybody, but I love that fleece and it keeps me very, very warm. Another thing I want to touch on real quick, it's not really going to keep you warm too much on your ride, but I've found it to be a necessity, but I can mainly have to use it. I know you're probably wondering, go ahead and put down your guesses in the comments right now. We might read them at the end, try and pick one funny one. But what this is, if I can get it open, is a pair of shower pants. So oh, if I get caught in a rainstorm or anything like that, I now have rain coverage, and I don't have to worry about getting wet on the way home, or even in a snowstorm. So, you see how small it was about the size of a water bottle? Just invest in one of these and keep it in your cycling kit. Put this in your emergency kit, just like you keep your inner tubes and everything, because you never know when you're going to Especially in Massachusetts. I have a pair myself, so they're great. So, they're amazing. These ones are on the sporties on them. You can find ones that actually cover your shoes and everything like that. But, like I said, get some sort of light rain. We haven't talked a lot about light insulation. Um, I'm the kind of person who wears jeans all year round, but if you're going for a longer ride, then a synthetic long sleeve type 
will will work. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, full leg length tight will will work very very well. Yeah, just warm. like what we were showing off. Your legs generally are the warmest part of your body, so they don't require a lot of insulation. In fact, doubling up on insulation on your legs can lead to sweating down the line. So you want to be careful with that and stick with a synthetic material. What else we got? Oh, we got varmints right there, right in front of you. Here's another thing. So. When it gets really, really cold, I gotta be honest, I switch out the gloves and I go straight to mittens. They're not super easy to shift with and control my handlebars and grab onto all that well. So, the nice thing that these guys have done is made something so you don't have to wear mittens. This will zip right over your handlebar. Somehow. So these guys fit right over your handlebar, your brake levers, and your shifters, and then you just put your hand right in there and you're warm the whole time. This is a waterproof layer made out of neoprene, which is the same thing that scuba diving outfits are made out of. So it's designed to keep you warm in the coldest of situations. So we love bar mitts for the people who aren't crazy about wearing mittens but want to keep their hands warm and tight. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, so we've talked about all the winter stuff that you should have with you. Let's go talk about some ways of how to transport all that stuff. Mm. So we're going to go over to the bike here. And we're going to take a quick demonstration. So some ways that you can transport some of this stuff, depending on the setup on your bike, you might be able to put a cargo rack on the back of it. I have a little cargo rack on the back of this bike right here that conveniently has like a little trunk bag on it that if you can do it, has fold-out panniers, which is really nice for days when I run a lighter setup where I don't really need that big bulk of panniers on the side and everything like that. But it's also good for if I do have days where maybe I'm going to grocery shopping or I have my hard shell, soft shell jacket and then I need a way to store it once I get to work and when I'm traveling. So this is really nice. You can find some pretty decent racks and everything. We offer a few here. We also offer some used racks. So if you're looking to save a little bit, you can always come back and check out some of our used products. But I would definitely try and look at it. Not every bike can unfortunately take a rack. So we can also look for other alternatives. Like they have things called frame bags where it's simply just a triangle frame bag that's right in the middle there. And it allows you to store stuff on your bike and not really on your person, especially for I can really imagine if you can even do an office with like a laptop in your bag and everything like that, it gets pretty heavy pretty quick. So you want to find ways to put the weight onto your bike and not really on yourself. Let me see. But yeah, this rack right here. Let me see. Another thing you always want, this is just yeah, something to make noise for people while you're behind them. That's right here is another pan here. So for those of you who, we, we've talked a lot about wet weather, so for those of you who are wondering how you keep that stuff dry in there, they have incredibly high quality, waterproof, weatherproof bags, panniers. Uh, I personally love the uh, stuff made by Ortley. It's not cheap, this one goes for about 115 bucks, but you get some great benefits out of it because not only is it a side bag, it's also a backpack. So you can run this as a pannier, or a backpack, you know, for carrying all your stuff. That's great. Orly makes some really great weatherproof, waterproof products for the winter. So if you want to keep your gear dry while you're traveling, this goes a long way. And another thing that I can recommend that some people might not think about, if you happen to own more than one helmet or you're maybe in the market looking for a new helmet, you want to try and find something that has less air holes in it because you don't want all that wind going on your head, you want it being deflected off of the helmet. So this right here is more like a road style helmet. It has a bunch of openings and everything in it which allows airflow, but that means our head gets pulled. I think we have one helmet in stock. You have know, helmets like these that have openable and closable them. But these are also good for if you get caught in the rain, you keep the rain off your head at the same time. Also, now get your noggin wet. Let's see, you wanna, wanna go into some bike demos? Show people how to clean chains? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about all of the fancy stuff you need to, you know, that is gonna help you, you know, it's gonna help you be a lot more comfortable in the winter, but I wanna talk about the way you ride that's gonna help you in the winter. Um, the winter gets scary, let's be honest, and I'm not crazy about it myself riding a bike uh, in some rough conditions, 
but we do it. So, uh, to help you feel more comfortable, I just want to give you a couple of riding tips that are going to go a long way. Um, avoid leaning into your turns. That's going to cause you to slip out much easier, especially with a set of slippery tires on, 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 on some slick pavement. Uh, or tires that are bald on slick pavement, or construction plates. We really want to evolve slip, uh, <laughs> avoid slippy surface, slippery surfaces. As hard as it is to see black ice, I'll try to avoid that. Though a stud of tires can help you run better for that kind of thing. Um, so rather than leaning into your turns, like I said, to cause you to, that may cause you to slip out, try turning your bars a little bit more and sitting slightly more upright, taking it at a slower time. Going a little bit slower is going to go a long way um, riding through the winter. Um, another big thing that I always notice is that when it snows, the roads get a lot smaller. So you are sharing them with the cars. And cars need to know, or well, cars gotta know that bicyclists are entitled to a full lane when the bike lane is not available. Um, so, try your best to stay patient even though there's gonna be people in front of you and in back of you. Um, they're not trying to hurt you, so try to make yourself visible to them because not everybody's always looking for you. So don't be afraid to stay right in the lane with them because the bike lanes often get filled up um, with, uh, with snow, they get plowed right into. So, you know, be one of the cars if you can. You know, make sure that they're not able to go to your side, uh, either side, stay right in the center of the lane, um, car in front, car in back, you are entitled to that. It is your right, and it's your right to stay safe. <laughs> it's the law for them to uh, avoid you. Um, Let's see, putting a little less pressure in your tires can also help when your tires are at a very high PSI. Um, for example, a lot of city hybrids will have about 85 PSI. Around this time of year, 65 is nice. Um, being softer, it helps you conform to varying uh, consistencies on the road. It also um, is a lot less slippery. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, electronics, keeping your phone close to you. Uh, this is one thing I deal with skiing all the time, is that I go to change to the next song on my phone and it's dead. Uh, so that, for, that, that, for that fact, I like to keep my phone right in my breast pocket. That helps it last a little bit longer, but unfortunately, uh, electronics do die a little bit faster in the cold. Yeah, well, let's see. Um, try not to sweat. <laughs> yeah, so try, um, I know a famous training technique that some people like to do during the summer is when they have to stop at a stoplight, they'll sprint once it turns green to really get their heart rate up and going. Don't do that. The wetter you get, the cold. So you want to kind of take like a nice steady pace with the ride. So what that means, plan a little earlier. Leave a little earlier to take a slower ride when you're going into work or wherever you're going. So maybe if you have a commute to work that's up a really big hill, leave half an hour earlier and don't take the really big hill that day. That will save you down the road. Because one, you'll be a little cleaner when you get to work and you won't be as cold during the ride. Well, that's about all I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions from the audience? Yeah, we could do a quick question and answer if anybody watching wants to type yeah, the question the into the chat. Um, I also want to plug, if you're watching in the month of November into December, of 2020, we do have our holiday sale, which is 20% off of all winter related accessories. That includes helmets, racks, fenders, gloves, uh, bar mitts, and lights. So visit the shop and check us out. Yes. 
Make sure you're staying hydrated, even though you feel like you're not sweating. You want to make sure that you're taking in water. Um, but yes, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have a question, you feel free to write it in the, the comments, and we can respond to it at a later date, or we can address it in the next clinic as well. All right? Thanks, everybody.